Hello everyone. Welcome to Gale Forum, Global Health Education and Innovative Learning Forum channel. Myself Yuvrajan Subramaniam. This is our first episode. This video session introduces public health. I hope this session will not only increase the knowledge of public health practice but also develop a critical, questioning approach to the application of the public health knowledge. In this session, I would like to discuss about what is health, how the health changed in this contemporary world, historical markers in the development of public health, the scope and concerns of public health and how public health emerged. Let us start the session. What is health? The question, what is health, is not an easy one to answer. United Nations officials had to ponder it when, in year 1948, they founded the World Health Organization, WHO. They came up with the following, health is a complete state of physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity, a definition that has been widely cited ever since. Many people do think of health, primarily, as the absence of disease. Diagnosing and treating disease is the central focus of most health systems and at the core of traditional medical school curricula. Tackling disease is seen as the primary route to improving health and there has been considerable success in doing so. In many parts of the world, the government action to improve health has been far less convincing and healthcare systems continue to focus on the absence of disease rather than taking the more holistic view that the World Health Organization's definition suggests. For example, in the Conservative government's financial statement in the autumn of year 2015, despite the need to find funds to pay down a deficit, a major increase was made in funding for the National Health Service NHS, largely to address pressures in hospital services while public health budgets were cut. In the late 1960s the leading British public health thinker Thomas McKeon of Birmingham said, the disposal of society's investment in health is based on strange premises. It is assumed that we are ill and made well, whereas it is nearer to the truth that we are well and made ill. Fifty years on, it is difficult to dispute the continuing validity of this telling observation when the policies of many health ministries are viewed in the cold light of day. Health in a changing world In the mid-1980s, the World Health Organization published the Ottawa Charter for Health Promotion. It followed the first major global conference to address the concept of health promotion, which is now a mainstream component of public health. The Ottawa Charter developed the idea of health as a fundamental human right and identified a few prerequisites for it, including peace, food, shelter, education, income, sustainable resources, a sustainable ecosystem, social justice, and equity. The Ottawa Charter saw it as more helpful to define the social and physical resources required for health and focus on improving those, rather than defining health at the individual level. The original World Health Organization definition of health is more than half a century old. Some see its statement that health is a state of complete well-being as unhelpful. Very few people are completely well in every way, and on a pedantic view of the definition, most people are therefore unhealthy. As people age, many begin to accumulate chronic, non-communicable diseases. Arguably, a more helpful definition would not write them all off as failing to attain a complete state of physical, mental and social well-being. 
The World Health Organization's original definition also says nothing about what physical, social, or mental well-being means, simply stating that health requires each of these to be complete. Some maintain that the definition has led to an ideal of perfect health, and that this utopian notion has fed an increasing medicalization of society's problems. Historical Markers in the Development of Public Health The history of public health goes back to almost a history of civilization. Possible traditions during civilization may be taboos against waste disposal within communal areas or near drinking water sources, rites associated with burial of the dead, and communal assistance during birth. In the ancient societies, before 500 BC, the history is that of archaeological findings from the Indus Valley, North India, around 2000 BC with the evidence of bathrooms and drains in homes and seva below street level. There was evidence of drainage systems in the Middle Kingdom of ancient Egypt in the time 2700 to 2000 BC. There were written records concerning public health, codes of Hammurabi of Babylon, 3900 years ago. The Book of Leviticus, 1500 BC had guidelines for personal cleanliness, sanitation of campsites, disinfection of wells, isolation of lepers, disposal of refuses and hygiene of maternity. In the classical cultures, 500 BC to 500 AD, public health was practiced as Olympics for physical fitness, community sanitation and water wells in the era golden age of ancient Greek, and aqueducts to transport water, sewer system, regulation on street cleaning and infirmaries for slaves by Romans. In the Middle Ages, 500 to 1500 AD, health problems were considered as having spiritual cause and solutions. They were supernatural powers for pagans and punishments for sins for Christians. Leprosy, plague, black death, during the 14th century and syphilis were some of the deadliest epidemics resulted from failure to consider physical and biological cause. The era of renaissance and exploration, 1500 to 1700 AD, was the rebirth of thinking of about nature of the world and humankind. There was a growing belief that diseases were caused by environment, not by spirits and critical thinking about disease causation e.g., malaria, bad air. In the 18th centuries, there were problems of industrialization, urban slums leading to unsanitary conditions and unsafe workplaces. Edward Jenner 1796 demonstrated vaccination against smallpox. Historical markers in the development of public health. In the 19th century there were still problems of industrialization, but agricultural development led to improvements in nutrition and there was real progress towards understanding the causes of communicable diseases towards the last quarter of the century. The Louis Pasteur's germ theory, 1862, and Koch's postulate, 1876, were remarkable progresses. 20th century has been the period of health resources development, 1900 to 1960, social engineering, 1960 to 1973, health promotion, primary health care, and market period, 1985 and beyond. The challenge in the 21st century are reducing the burden of excess morbidity and mortality among the poor counter-reacting the threats of economic crisis, unhealthy environment, and lifestyle, 
developing more effective health system and investing in expanding knowledge base. The scope and concerns of public health. There have been many definitions and elaborations of public health. The definition offered by the Akesson report has been widely accepted. Public health is the science and art of preventing disease, prolonging life, and promoting health through the organized efforts of society. This definition underscores the broad scope of public health and the fact that public health is the result of all of society's efforts viewed as a whole, rather than that of single individuals. In 2003, Roger Detels defined the goal of public health as the biologic, physical, and mental well-being of all members of society regardless of gender, wealth, ethnicity, sexual orientation, country, or political views. This definition or goal emphasizes equity and the range of public health interests as encompassing not just the physical and biological, but also the mental well-being of society. The United Nations Millennium Development Goals, the slogan of which is, Health for All, the Akesson Report, and Detail's goals depict public health as being concerned with more than the mere elimination of disease and placing public health issues as a fundamental component of development. To achieve the World Health Organization, WHO, goal of health for all, it is essential to bring to bear many diverse disciplines to the attainment of optimal health, including the physical, biological, and social sciences. The field of public health has adapted and applied these disciplines for the elimination and control of disease, and the promotion of health. Dear friends, we can discuss more on public health in our next episode. I hope this video will be useful and thank you so much for watching this video. Kindly click the like button in case you feel useful. Give your valuable comments for better improvement. Please subscribe this channel share this video link to your friends, colleagues, people who work in development and healthcare sectors.